you type Purdy. <laughs> Yes, Hickok 45 with an empty rifle. Your internet shooting companion. <laughs> internet. Hey, there you go. Pretty, pretty uh, appropriate. Internet nut. Uh, coming to you from Tennessee. Yes, the home of, again, the home of a lot of Paul Harrell uh, viewers. How's that? Again, we uh, want to mention Paul Harrell cool guy made a lot of great videos and we're sorry that he's in bad health so a lot of viewers a lot of common viewers again not that you're common common to both of us uh yeah uh, that reminds me what does it remind me of i, don't know. It, I do see um uh, comments about certain people or whatever and and uh, so often, again, I've mentioned this before, I'm impressed and uh, kind of flattered that, that, that people who watch our videos like who they like, besides us. I mean, I guess they like us a little bit. Uh, and some of the other people that you watch and things that, that come up, you know, warrior poet, poet warrior, which is it? What am I? Poet idiot, idiot poet? I don't know, but I, I get it. John Lovell, right? That's his name. But, you know, just people that are uh, uh, sensible, have common sense, and uh, offer a lot, probably a lot more than we do, but just just some some sharp people, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, so I'm, uh, sorry to say I'm glad to be in people's, I'm, I'm glad that people who watch our videos also uh, have good taste, uh, all around good taste, for the most part, you, know, you always got, you know, the, Two percent, the one percent uh, goofballs, you know, in any endeavor. We've talked about that too much, actually, don't we? So yeah, I'm glad you're here. It's Easter Sunday for most people. Well, a lot of people, not most people, I guess, on the planet. I don't know. What would the percentage be? You tell me. Uh, for some people, it's not a, a big day. Other people, it's the uh, biggest day, maybe, of the year, right? So uh, happy Easter if you celebrate Easter, and happy Easter if you don't celebrate Easter. Don't be offended. I'm not offended. People wish me different happy days or whatever for things. Uh, I can be offended. I'm sure all of us can be offended, but I try not to go out of my way to be offended. Yeah. A lot of people on the planet, newsflash, with lots of different, oh gosh, uh, backgrounds, uh, religions, race, uh, sexual preference, you name it. And, uh, we let those all those things divide us uh, too often if we're not careful i tell you what divides me i've said maybe something like this before what somebody's gender and religion and background all the all those things uh sexual preference you name it uh any any color i don't know what else hair color height <laughs> intelligence all the things that make us different in some ways None of that matters to me one bit. What matters to me is a person's, uh, or what, what, I mean, I, I don't get into other people's business. I, I, I don't care. I guess what I'm getting at is for me to kind of enjoy your company, you know, say I have a cup of coffee, short conversation, long conversation, or to, uh, you know, kind of thing. Uh, to befriend you, be a friend or an acquaintance that I kind of enjoy your company or whatever you want to call it, whatever level that would be. My criteria basically is just your attitude, uh, your demeanor, uh, your character more or less. I mean, I'm going to give people a uh, questionnaire. What would you do if someone dropped their wallet and uh, you couldn't find your, you know, I mean that necessarily, uh, but uh, just 
a person's, uh, yeah, just who they are, the demeanor, the attitude, uh, uh, their outlook on life, and all, all of that is is what uh, can be divisive for me because regardless of all those other things, religion, color, and everything else, uh, that's the thread that runs through all that for me. I, I couldn't care about all the other stuff at all, less. It's uh, the kind of person you are, personality and all that is what I'm, I'm attracted to people for, uh, for that kind of thing, you know. I, I have friends who have you know, different sorts of beliefs and different things, and I wouldn't agree with them on everything, uh, but we, we just have a kind of a, a, a enough in common and a, a demeanor and sense of humor and enjoy hanging out, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, I don't know. Does that mean anything? Yeah. Does anything I say mean anything? <laughs> anyway, you never know what I'm going to get off. I never know what I'm going to get off on right away. Uh, but anyway, again, no giveaway scams. I do not have a TikTok account. Okay, I still get questions about that. I, I really, I do. Uh, and uh, don't forget the Hickok 45 Clips channel. I don't know if you noticed one John put up last week. The uh, it's uh, in a uh, like a looks like a caterpillar junkyard. <laughs> that that one that was the, that's the one video up there. Everything is a clip. Hey, I bet that's why we call it the Hickok 45 Clips channel. When you go over there, look at the first video. We explain all that, but. So John puts something up every morning, and uh, one he put up last week is the only one, I think, that is actually not a clip from a posted video on this, cha this channel. It's the only one, and we reserve the right to do that, but I mean, generally it's gonna be. The, the reason uh, that, uh, <laughs> that uh, uh, woods, looks like a woods walk, except it's not a woods walk, is it? It's a caterpillar ride or whatever you want to call it, but a uh, heavy machinery ride shootout. Uh, uh, we couldn't post that one. We, we did it. Uh, that belongs to a friend of mine. Uh, what he call that? Uh, uh, something about the apocalypse or, <laughs> or Mad Max or something. That's what it looks like. Actually, that's what all of Kentucky looks like. <laughs> that was filmed up in Kentucky several years ago. We did that. But for various reasons, we couldn't post it and, uh, and uh, didn't post it and uh, the whole thing. But I'm glad John ran across that But in, in the posted part of that. It was, it was pretty funny. It was fun doing riding on <laughs> through this Caterpillar uh, graveyard. And not just Caterpillar, I guess, but you know, heavy machinery graveyard. So uh, you, you never know what, uh, where we're going to end up. But that was, that was pretty, hope you caught that. That was fun. <laughs> We've done some dumb things, I tell you. That's what makes life interesting, doing dumb things. As long as these dumb things don't hurt anybody, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Some dumb things do hurt people. And, uh, you know, you're speaking of that, it was sad how the, that bridge fell the last week. Uh, my gosh, Baltimore. It could have been so much worse, couldn't it? I mean, it's bad enough. And what uh, the count, as I record today, I think is just about six people they think are under the water, you know, didn't make it. And they were construction workers there on the bridge, uh, filling potholes and that kind of thing, you know. This it's just another reminder of the randomness, you know, of life, isn't it? The randomness. Uh, you know, just uh, here today, gone tomorrow, gone next minute. You know, uh, just the things that happen. And, uh, you know, I've been around a long time. I've avoided any uh, deathly random acts like that. Could happen tomorrow, could happen next minute. You know, something could fall out of this tree, a limb, and, and uh, do me in. There's some up there big enough to do me in if they fell all of a sudden, you know. I mean, things can happen. You just, usually they don't, you know, so we don't worry about it. Even working on a bridge out over the river like that in the middle of the night, you know, you, you know, been doing it maybe for years and people have been doing it for decades and decades and with light and whatever. And, you know, so you think, well, this is breezy out here maybe or chilly or whatever, but the, just because we're up on this bridge over the river and making a difference, you know, people drive by here by the thousands every day and every hour. And, uh, but man, random things happen, you know, the, 
uh, when it first happened, I thought, you know, what are the odds? And I told a couple of friends of mine, that, you know, the, the 30 seconds you're driving across this bridge is the exact time this gigantic uh, container ship hits the supports and knocks you into the water and you're dead. You know, I mean, the, the odds of that, you know, just the randomness of that. Well, turns out, I think there was no one driving across. They got them stopped in time, but uh, but still, the odds that the, the night you're working on potholes up there, I mean, if that's all they're doing, you know, it, you know, they, they could have been done by then maybe, or uh, probably just getting started well, I don't know, but it's just, a, what, a mile or two. And so, you know, uh, it might have just been a one-night deal, you know, and that's the night that happens, I, I don't know. But, but anyway, sad and crazy uh, things that happen. Uh, a reminder, a reminder, isn't it? It, it is short, life is short. It can be a whole lot shorter than you expected, you know, too. Uh, but, yeah, isn't this a beaut? Isn't this a beaut? You've seen it before if you've been around. If not, check out the channel. All kinds of cool videos, I think. I'm a little biased, I guess, right? Uh, but, yeah, this is... a. Uh, 1896 miles or made this one made in 1911 that was a big year wasn't it 1911 so that would make it what almost 100 years old and uh yeah <laughs> so what 113 years at uh great cartridge great cartridge and uh i brag on it every time I get it out uh same chambering as my Sako rifle, Seiko, right? My Sako, uh, 6.5 of 55. Great round, been around a long time and uh, wonderful. This thing is such a pleasure to shoot. Uh, really anything chambered in that 6.5 of 55 is. Uh, and, uh, th this one's neat, it's, it's a really nice shape. You, you've seen close-ups in the, the main video. If you can get the light, light's a little weird today. I'm a little earlier than probably you know, ought to be. Yeah, isn't that a beaut? Yeah, regional condition, all matching. Swedish, Swedish Mauser. What a jewel. Yeah. Uh, yep, 1911. Yeah, right on it. You can see that. So, I'll shoot it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. There's a little mixture of ammo in that one, that's all right. I'm not competing at Camp Perry. Somebody would say, what's Camp Perry? Is that a Boy Scout camp? What's that? <laughs> Most of you know what Camp Perry is. Although I've never been there. I ran into a viewer at, uh, uh, at the grocery today, though. Caught me buying two liters <laughs> and talking about Camp Perry just today. <laughs> He was from Toledo, Ohio. That's why I came up. Did I miss that pulling pin? I saw it shake. That sight's not terribly visible. Must be partly the light. Uh, Got the front sight touched up a little bit with white paint. It's kind of a long gun. It's a little bit like a, a G98, you know, a German Mauser. Uh, kind of looks like it. If you're at a gun show and you you see a lot of these guns lying around, I, you know, I always do a double take. Ooh, is that a G98? Because those things are as rare as hen's teeth. I wonder why hen's teeth are so rare. No, but uh, must be that's where saying comes from. Maybe hens don't have teeth. I guess that's it, right? Uh, or maybe they have just one tooth. Uh, some of you farmers, let me know. I should know that. I should know that. Uh oh, drinking out of, out of a cup today instead of a cup. Went to Culver's for lunch, one of my favorite <laughs> little restaurants. <laughs> They're not a sponsor, not yet. <laughs> They'd be welcome. Uh, I mean, I like the Culver's. Uh, let's see, that's iced tea, by the way. I'm not drinking soft drinks. Uh, 
Uh, what else? Gosh, I don't know. You know, I heard on a, uh, I saw online, I guess it was, that, you know, Tennessee passed the law, so glad, uh, in the last couple of weeks, I think, where it's illegal to uh, use AI in like taking somebody's uh, image or their voice and different things, you know, and I feel like, uh, you know, John and I are kind of a recipient of the benefit of that in a way, because we produce these goofy videos. Who knows where AI is going, you know, with the capability of just, you know, uh, creating somebody's image and, you know, people could just be making these videos and, uh, or, or have uh, uh, Taylor Swift singing, you know, hit song on stage and everybody think it's her, it's a YouTube video, whatever it is, you know, it's just kind of a weird thing that's going on. Uh, I guess at this point, you can kind of tell it's not the real person, can't you? I hope, but you know, it's early stages of all that. So anyway, Tennessee kind of got ahead of that. Partly, guess why? Because the music business is such a big deal in Nashville, Tennessee. <laughs> and so, so that's good. That's good. It's actually against the law. Um, what else? Oh yeah, you saw the uh, the short, hopefully with the old USGI, the Colt 1911. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's, I saw so many comments on that short about, you know, people just loved that thing and thought it was so cool. You could tell some of those people are only not that familiar with it maybe even. Uh, I, I'm just so pleased that so many people have an appreciation, even if they're not even a hardcore gun person or shooter or something, just a firearm that is over 100 years old like this or that was used in all those world wars and carried by our GIs for all those decades and there's one shooting. They, they just, uh, people, most people seem to really appreciate the, the history of that, the coolness of a gun like that. Of course, we've done lots of videos on those and that one, one or two. Uh, it's, it's neat to see that. Uh, I heard someone someone left a comment said they I, said I can hear the history in every shot fired. You know that was good. That's poetic. Can hear the history in every shot fired. Maybe it was you that left it. Own up to your poetry, Bill or George, whoever. Uh, so that's kind of cool. You know I used to I I got in a little trouble early on kidding you know me mr jokester uh but i typically you know will joke about something that's kind of absurd enough to where nobody should fall for it you know at least i think i am and it doesn't always turn out that way right but uh i guess when was it it was i know it was a video with a thompson i don't know if it was a machine guy i think it was a semi-auto instead of the we have done the full auto time or two but I don't know, I think this was a semi-auto version maybe, I don't know, I was doing a, a, I think a woods walk. And I made a comment about it being the same one I carried in World War II. And there were, there were uh, a few people that, uh, that got onto me for either lying about it or like stolen valor, that kind of just weird stuff. Like it wasn't a lot of it, it was a few. I thought, oh, geez, you know, I, I, the last thing I want to do is pose, be a poser or steal val valor and act like uh, I'm a, uh, a veteran or something, you know. I mean, I thought, my gosh, uh, I thought that was quite a joke. Uh, I wasn't even alive when World War II was going on, much less, you know, being able to serve in World War II and carry that Thompson, you know, and I just kind of assume people would know that, kind of like joking about a Civil War rifle or something. You know, <laughs> but so I'm careful. I, I don't make jokes about carrying a firearm in battle unless it's at least back to World War One, preferably in the 1800s. OK, yeah. So I mean, you may hear me make that joke about a Civil War rifle or cap and ball pistol or something, you know, carrying it back in in the uh, War of 1812 or in the Civil War or something like that. Anybody that accuses me of stolen valor there or lying uh, you know, they, they just deserve whatever <laughs> happens to them. <laughs> but I mean, really, you know, I, I don't know. So, well, maybe I, 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 do I look that old? Maybe, you know, see, I would have to have been a hundred years old. This was like 10 years ago. 
So I'd had to be a hundred years, almost a hundred years old, ten years ago, be running around the woods with the same Thompson that I had carried in World War II. Anyway, so I'm careful about that. I don't make those jokes with like the 1911s and that kind of thing. <laughs> Can I shoot this again? Oh man, let me show you one of these bullets. Now this is some, uh, uh, yeah, PPU. It doesn't stink, just call PPU. It's actually soft point. I don't know if I should be shooting that much of that, but anyway. Uh, so, I use the clip sometimes, and sometimes I just punch them in. I, I'm not in a hurry, you know, even on a Sunday. Not in a hurry. Oh, you know, one thing I was going to, yeah, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about, I guess I don't know when it was, two or three weeks ago, about uh, the discipline, how I got spanking growing up. Didn't think anything about it, didn't blame, all that kind of thing. A lot of you made comments about how you grew up the same way and everything. And it dawned on me, I didn't, uh, uh, that uh, I, I was not advocating spanking, you know, you know kids or something. <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, that's, you know, there's, mainly it is, uh, we, we just need, need to um, uh, have discipline of some kind and it needs to be consistent, you know, and there has to be consequences, not necessarily hitting them, obviously. Uh, not many parents do that anymore, but, uh, but there are great parents that figure out a way to discipline their kids without hitting them, you know, just, but it mainly it's just having consistent discipline. There's lots of ways you can withhold privileges now. You know, really, uh, a lot of advantages over even when I was young. My gosh, take their phone away for a little while, or the TV, or whatever. Uh, grounded, you know, there's just so many ways, things they don't want to have happen, you know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, it dawned on me. Okay. 6.5 by 55, are we recording? Yeah, that's a good idea. That way y'all can watch it better. All right, there's a gallon jug down there. There was a gallon jug. There's a Kentucky two liter down there on that barrel, if you can see it. Wow, it's not there any longer either. There's a bowling pin right here. Woo! And a green two liter. Wow, oh, look at it. You see that? It's right here. Look at that, that traveled. I don't know, 10 yards or more in my direction. Again, a reminder, think the Kennedy assassination. Just because what you saw looked like what happened, you never know. <laughs> All right. One more bullet in this load. All plate. All right. What a smooth rifle. And this thing's been used, this cartridge for hunting moose and everything. I mean, it's like a uh, lot like the 6.5 Creedmoor. Really, it's a, kind of the granddaddy of that, I guess. But uh, it, I mean, if you want a smooth shooting, something that doesn't kick really hard, boy, that, that cartridge is hard to beat. It really is. Boy, especially in this big rifle. Uh, it's nice in my uh, Seiko Sako, uh, yeah, too. Seiko Sako. <laughs> I always feel like I've got to say that for our American audience and for our European audience, world audience as well, because it's supposed to be pronounced Sako, right? But I grew up here nothing but Seiko. I mean, you know, it's hard to change. It really is. Like, I grew up hearing nothing but uh, carbine, you know? And then I find out, I don't know, probably 40, 50 years old, and I hear someone say carbine. Really? You know, I, and so you, you grow up with something forever that's hard to change, and, and I don't want to change. It's like grand, you know, say it the way you want to say it, as long as it's not, you know, some kind of dead wrong thing. It's like Garan, you know, and Garan, the guy's name was Garan, but I don't know, the gun got, called the uh, Garan from early on, and so that's kind of what the gun is. His name is Garan, John Garan, but uh, the gun's kind of the, the Garan to everybody. 
uh, and some people choose to pronounce it Garen, which might be technically, you know, the way it should be pronounced. You know, I, I'm thinking I read that he was fine with calling it the, uh, the Grand. Now I can't even say it, you know, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. Just the way it is. Words are words, aren't they? Uh, uh, so, anyway. Uh, man, it seems like there's something I should be telling you about. Uh, yeah. End of March. Hard to believe, isn't it? Easter. Already here. You might be able to see. I don't know. There's not, I, I see some red buds. I don't know if you can see them over there. They're kind of high up, actually. Uh, up here high up. So we're out in the woods over here, so you're still mostly just dry leaves. But now other places, uh, it, grass is growing and the weeds. And I changed the oil in my John Deere this week. I hadn't changed it in two or three years. I don't put that many hours on it a year. For those who don't know, that's how you measure a, on a tractor. You don't do it by mileage on a tractor. It's hours. It tracks the hours. And uh, I, uh, I've had a, uh, a tractor since uh, 88, 87, 88, uh, and uh, I, I used to put even more hours when I bush hog more, mowed more, but I've let everything grow up except for some trails and things. And so I probably don't put but about 10 hours on a thing a year. I, yeah, probably something like that. Uh, and uh, so I, I go years and not change oil, you know, and uh, but I had gone to him. It was boy, was it black, black oil? Boy, was it dirty? I think it was dirty. Maybe it was just black. I mean, it gets black pretty quick. Maybe it's a diesel. But uh, I was reminded why I turned into a slacker in my well, not in my old age for about 25 years or more, and started paying other people to change my oil in my cars and things. I just don't do it anymore. I used to they crawl under there in my oil pans and I'd even change plugs and everything, but I don't do any of that anymore. I I could do it, but I just choose not to. But like most people, I guess. And but on a tractor, you know, I I'm already do I don't have a trailer to haul it around. What I'm gonna do, you know, pay somebody to come and get it, pick it up, and you know, yeah, would you change my oil on my tractor? <laughs> Not that. Plus, a tractor is is simpler in some ways. You know, everything is more accessible. Uh, but it's still it's a reminder. You know, okay, yeah, uh, this is a mess, and you gotta do something with the oil, and and uh, I just take it out and pour it in the neighbor's yard usually, and. Uh, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> but it, it, it can be a real mess, you're not careful. And I've been thinking about doing it. I was like, okay, I get, dig out my oldest jeans and old, oldest shoes before I get into that. I haven't even changed the oil in five years on anything from And uh, so I put it off for a few days and I was, I was dressed just like I am now. In fact, these same pants and everything. And I thought, ah, I need to do that. I ought to go ahead and try it. Maybe I can keep forgetting it on me, you know, and everything. Yeah, I did. I didn't. I didn't get any on me. I was very careful. And the wind was blowing, which made it worse. Uh, uh, changing oil. But anyway, got it done. And the old tractor's ready to go. And it's, you know, it's mowing time on the trails and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and the yard. I don't have a lot of yard to mow because, uh, even though I've got almost 40 acres, I I just don't have that much around the house, maybe a half acre, quarter acre or something. So I just use a push mower. And, uh, well, self-propelled push mower. I, I bought it, I think I told you, I bought a, uh, a uh, steel uh, battery powered mower. You know, uses the same battery that my hedge trimmer, my blower, and uh, a recently purchased uh, weed eater. Okay, use that A300 or whatever battery, kind of a big one. Uh, the mower takes two of them. Well, it doesn't take two, it's just got a slot for an extra, but it takes one of those. So so that's the deal with, with these battery powered uh, uh, implements. It, it just makes sense. Uh, Steel's a good name as far as I know. But the main thing is it makes sense to stick with one company doesn't it because and I think one battery if you're thinking about doing that if you haven't done it uh, before you get too many uh, 
implements or a variety of things and you end up having to it, to me it just wouldn't make a lot of sense now it does require you have some devotion <laughs> and loyalty to one company so uh, you I would advise you do your research and settle on a company and, and there's probably not a lot of difference you know amongst, amongst many of them but because it makes so much sense to stick with one company right and I'm not telling you of older folks that much you know but some of the younger people maybe just got a house you're or you just you know you just are I don't know you don't have a lot of that stuff yet you've been thinking about getting a weed eater and that's really the time to think about it before you get that first piece maybe you know do your research and you know down the road you're going to be looking at hedge trimmers or a weed eater or mower maybe a like about power a battery powered mower perhaps down the road maybe not anytime soon but you know you probably will at some whatever it it, it does make a, a lot of sense to stick with one company and uh preferably the same battery that was my thinking on it. I wanted a, a one of the, I guess the first thing I bought with steel was a, a blower, leaf blower. And I like, I wanted the blower that was pretty powerful, but I didn't want to have to strap on my back and go through all that. Like I'm in the business of, you know, mowing yards necessarily. I just wanted one I can just grab and, you know, one handheld and, but one of the biggest models like that before you get into the, gigantic ones where you got to strap the battery on your back or whatever it is you know and i don't know what the ball is but it, it, it that thing is a it's a it's a hoss it's nice not all that heavy it takes that big a300 battery and it's a seal like i said it's it's kind of big but it's not exceptionally heavy or anything and uh so i've been really happy with that and so i got hedge trimmers and uh, uh, well, the mower, you know, and then of course the the trimmer, and I've had that on my my list to to get a uh, a trimmer with it. My battery charger on my Husqvarna went out, and that thing is old. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to go ahead with steel with this too. Get one that takes the same battery and all that. So anyway, I probably not going to charge you for that information, but uh, it just seems like a a sensible move to me. You know, what you, whichever company you go with. Whether what are there a ton of them? My dad was, he liked. Uh, of course, this was you know he's been gone 25 years almost now. Uh, well, um, no, I'm sorry, 30 years exactly, 30 years. Uh, yeah, coming up in about a week it'd be 30 year uh, anniversary of when he left the planet. But um, uh, he, he liked Makita. He had a bunch of stuff with that drills and all this battery powered stuff. And I don't know what they make mowers in the whole nine yards or not uh, now my brother i think he's a, kind of a milwaukee guy uh, and i've got some dewalt stuff i've got some battery power a drill or two some things like that with dewalt a uh, hand saw that kind of thing uh, but as far as the yard and garden stuff and all that the bigger implements i just want to well for one thing i had a drill a power drill you know the battery this thing takes you know it's, it's it's kind of like a brick, about the size of a brick, I guess, you know, that, that category. So that would be a, you know, a big drill, you know, for one thing, or hand drill. So, okay, enough on that. Can I shoot again? <laughs> I'm going to start sending y'all a bill for this uh, information, the non-firearms information, you know. I'm perfectly happy to, to give you information, my advice, on firearms for free. But nah, not on lawnmowers, I'm sorry. Not on hedge trimmers and weed eaters, and eh, you gotta pay for that. Yeah, that that doesn't come free. That's valuable information. <laughs> valuable information. Okay. Let's shoot this sweetie. It is a sweetie. I didn't I thought something didn't feel right about that. I'm not sure what I did there, but that thing really got wedged really got wedged uh did i try to get six in there okay i'm gonna all right got him <laughs> he was tight for some reason all right piggy or uh buffalo this thing is so pleasant to shoot Well, 
Maybe it's, uh, you know what, I think it's a soft tip. I think I have read that uh, you gotta be careful with soft tip ammo. I don't know, PPU, I don't know. I've shot a fair amount of it though, if not any issue. Here's some Fioki, old Fioki. I don't know if that's what kind of tip it has on it. Okay, it doesn't have that. Let me try this, some old stuff I've had a while. Good while. It's a nice thing about ammo, it lasts a long time, you know. Take care of it. It's uh it's really a pretty good investment. You know you're gonna shoot. You know you're gonna be shooting in 30 years from now. You know. Doesn't hurt to stock up on ammo. It's not getting any cheaper. Right bowling pins? <laughs> that happen Ooh, one more bowling pin and one more bullet you know I was trying to avoid hitting steel I think I did that yeah, it's a little powerful to shoot obviously plates and even uh, Clyde over there I don't want to put a hole in Clyde Clyde is not very thick, he's very thin. Yeah, he's thin skinned, uh, easily offended. <laughs> so anyway, uh, young people, do I have any advice for you before I get you all out of here? Uh, here's a reminder. Uh, young people, your social media postings are really not you or other people, maybe more importantly, the social media postings you see, whether it's Instagram or TikTok, wherever it is, uh, don't be too misled by that. That's not really that person. It might be partially, but it's not really that person. We, everybody presents their best side or their most glamorous side or when they're in a good mood, uh, you know, not when they're ugly and depressed, right? <laughs> and all that. Uh, so be, always be aware of that. Uh, it's just a, a snapshot kind of in somebody's, of someone's life, carefully chosen quite often, right? And, uh, you know, uh, that's not really somebody's life, you know, it's a, what, what that person or you do with your life is your life. You know, what, what are your accomplishments? What have you achieved in your life uh, in terms of maturity or what are, what are you doing? What, what, what track are you on? That's who you are, not what you look like on, on some social media posting, right? What's your education, you know, uh, your... Are you an enlightened person, either formally from education or just because you have common sense? You know, you have some experience and you're not someone who is a uh, hater of people, quick to judge and you know, all those things. You know, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, so you see somebody that looks good on social media, that doesn't mean it's somebody you, would, uh, in, you should envy, you know, at all necessarily, right? So. Everybody's situation looks better, you know, especially when they present it that way, right? Might look better than it really is, okay? Be aware of that, you all know that. That ain't exactly a news flash, you should know that, right? And you should know that is a 6.5 by 55 round. It is a very, very nice bullet and very comfy to shoot. I really like this rifle, uh, yeah. I don't have a lot of 6.5s. I've got the uh, model, what, 38, the shorter version of this and this. I had two of those. So I donated one to, was it, the, uh, yeah, the Tennessee Farm Association. And, uh, and in my, my, uh, Saco Seco, yeah. <laughs> Saco Seco. I think that's just what I'm gonna do every time I, I say that, it's gonna be Saco Seco, Seco Saco, right? Like I, I got in the habit uh, I was so bad to my seventh grade students. Uh, we had a, one of the things that we covered in the curriculum were uh, literary terminology, you know, like uh, metaphor, similes, and all that kind of thing. And, uh, and uh, there are different poetic devices that are used, uh, writing, any kind, but mainly poetry. Like one is repetition, you know, repetition, repeating something for emphasis, whatever a poet will do or a line or whatever. And uh, 
So repetition is actually a, a literary uh, device used, you know. So it was on the one of the terms I held them responsible for. And so whenever, <laughs> whenever I, some of you were watching, you, you remember this, I, uh, I would always ask, you know, if I was quizzing and asking, okay, what is repetition, repetition? Give me the definition. You know, I would always say it twice. I thought that was pretty funny, but I always did. And even after it became less funny, uh, I would still do that because then it became even more fun for me because it was a little irritating to them. So I got more enjoyment out of it, right? <laughs> I would do that. Oh, man. All right. I guess I ought to let you all go. Uh, it's funny, on that same list of uh, literary terms, again, if you're watching, if you're one of the, surely none of you that were in my class are watching this, but I have a whole list, you know, and I would do PowerPoints, uh, like so they could review them, kind of like note cards, flash cards, that kind of thing. I would create a PowerPoint and, you know, put the definition up and they'd come up with what the literary term is or, you know, whether it's metaphor, simile, whatever it is, repetition or something. And, or I'd have a line up uh, with it in it and they would have to figure that out. There's something they could put on their laptops and review for exams and that kind of thing. And I'd had a printout list of all the literary terms. It's, it's about I don't know, 30 of them or something with a with a definition, just a quick review kind of thing on paper. But I always had I always had uh, one uh, without using my real name. I, I put uh, my last name. I uh, let's say my name is Wilson. OK, one of the literary terms I put on there again, another way to abuse the kids, pick on was say if my name were Wilson, it was uh, Wilsonism. I had that right in there with metaphor and simile and everything, Wilsonism. And uh, the definition of Wilsonism was, you can look it up, no, no. <laughs> my definition was, what was it? Uh, and they had to know this. I, I put it on the exams and quizzes and everything. They got you know credit for that just like anything else. The definition was English teacher humor that is supposed to be funny but never is. Yeah, that was the exact definition. <laughs> I was so, uh, so bad. I was so bad. And, uh, and that was true. That was true. Just like what I was saying about repetition. You know, I was always trying to be funny, but I never was. So, you know, I thought that was an appropriate term to have in there with all the others. So anyway, uh, all these things you wanted to know, were desperate to know about, but didn't ask. So, should I shoot my Culver's cup? The iced tea's turned to water pretty much, but that's okay. So uh, I will let you go. And uh, I do appreciate y'all coming by this Sunday. And uh, I know there's some loyal, regular uh, viewers on Sunday, you know, come around every Sunday for the same idiocy. So I really appreciate that. And uh, appreciate you helping all these people that, that support our project. And of course, you all are the biggest supporter of the project. So don't forget the Hickok 45 Clips channel. And, uh, and don't forget the Hickok 45 channel. You know, stuff just doesn't get suggested or recommended. You know, we're not constantly reminding you to like and comment and subscribe and all that kind of thing. But man, apparently, if you don't do all that, it, it just doesn't come back to you. It just really doesn't. I know I'm, I follow several people. I am subscribed. I know I am in lots of different areas. And I saw one of their videos today pop up. So, wow, yeah, I forgot, man. Where have they been? You know, I, and you know, it's just crazy. Uh, and they've been posting regularly, I'm sure, you know. And uh, with gun videos, it's just, you know, they, uh, uh, you know, YouTube does not go out of its way to make sure you're seeing a lot of gun videos or that you even know about a lot of gun videos. They don't want you to know about all the genius that we're posting. Yeah, they really don't. <laughs> so y'all have a great week. And depending on where you live, the weather might be getting a little bit better. You might be getting outside a little bit more. And uh, you know, that's good. That's a good thing. Get out there off the pavement if you can. Go to a park. Uh, sit on the porch and your attitude will probably improve. Not that you have a bad, here I am implying you have a bad attitude. I'm full of insults, aren't I? No, it does help one's attitude, doesn't it? I just feel better when I get outside. 
I do. Maybe it's because I get away from my cats. Yeah, that might be part of it. Or my wife. Yeah, I get away from my wife and my cats. So I just have a better attitude when I go out the door. <laughs> Don't tell her I said that. Okay, I'm going to let you go and shut up. Life is good.